Welcome to Panda 2 Building Endless Runner Game Tutorial Part 2. In this tutorial, we will take our game further and learn some new techniques. Before starting, make sure you have completed the first part of this tutorial. Next, download the project file below this video and open the project in Panda 2. In the project, we have some new assets. Let's add those to the code so they get loaded. Click on the Assets button to see all media files. Create new empty line after the last Add Asset function. Try to click a media file on the sidebar while pressing the Alt key down. The editor will automatically insert the Add Asset code for that file. Go ahead and add all new media files to the game. Skip the font.png file because it will already be loaded from the font.fnt file. Next, click on the project name on the top left corner. As you can see, that will also switch back to the classes view. Click save and your new assets will be loaded. We want to have a title screen for our game. For that, we need to create a new scene. Create empty line after the main scene and click on the plus button on the bottom of the sidebar while pressing the shift key down. This will automatically insert the code to create new scene, name it title. Add new sprite using the logo.png as a texture. Set its anchor to center. We want to place the logo in the center of the stage. Instead of setting the X and Y values, we can also use the center function to do that quicker. Lastly, add the sprite to the stage so we can see it. Now, save your changes and you should see your new scene on the sidebar. Click on the small play button next to it and you will see your new title scene with the logo. That looks boring, so let's add some movement to the logo by using tweening. First, set the logo scale to zero. Add new tween by creating new instance of the tween class. Parameter for this is an object which properties we want to change. In this case, it's logo.scale. Next, use the to function to define the target values for our tween. Create new object that contains properties X and Y with values on both. The second parameter will be time and milliseconds that will take to reach those target values. Let's use 500. Now this will change our logo scale X and Y values from zero to one and a half second. Next, we want to add some easing to the tween so it looks cooler. Do this with the easing function with a parameter that contains shring back dot out. You can see all the different easing choices from the API documentation. Lastly, start the tween with the start function. Save and you should see our new tween. You can repeat that by pressing our scenes play button. Next, we will create a start button so we can start our game. Create a new class called button. On its init function, give it two parameters, texture and callback. Store the callback parameter into the class and then create a new sprite and use the texture parameter as a texture for it. Store the sprite also in the class. You will need to be able to access it from other functions inside the class. Set the sprite's anchor to center. To make us able to interact with the sprite, we need to set its interactive variable to true. There are many functions for interaction. We will use a few of them. First, bind mouse down function to a new function inside of our button class. Then, do the same for mouse up and mouse up outside functions. We can use the same target for those because they are going to work the same way. Lastly, bind the click function. Next, create those functions inside the class. Inside mouse down function, scale our sprite to value 0.9. And in mouse up function, scale it back to 1. Move to the click function. Check if the type of callback parameter that we stored is a function. If so, then call it. Now our button class is ready. Go back to the title scene and create a new instance of the button class. Give it a first parameter, button.png and create a function as a second parameter. Next, set the button sprite position X to the center of our game and Y to 900. Then add the sprite to the stage. Now, if you save your changes, you should see our new button below the logo. Try to click on it. It should scale down and back up 
but nothing will happen. We created a new function as a second parameter to the button. That function is called when we press the button. Inside that function, change the current scene into the main scene to start the game. You can change the scene with game.system.setScene function and the scene's name as a parameter. Now save and try clicking on that button again. You should see the game is starting now. Lastly, for our title screen, let's change the background color. Click on the play button next to the title scene to switch back to it. Add new property to the title scene called background color. Set its value to white. Then save. Our title screen is now ready. Next, we will add some new things to the game scene. Switch back to the game scene with the play button and click on the player class. On the jump function, let's play sound as soon as our player jumps. We can do this by creating a new instance of the sound class and use the sound file as a parameter. For this, let's use the file jump.m4a. Then, call its play function to play the sound. Now, jump to the collide function and inside the if statement, where the player hits the ground, create a new sound from file run.m4a and store it as a variable inside our class. We want to loop this sound, so set its loop property to true. Then play the sound. Go back to the jump function and stop the run sound using the stop function, so the sound won't play anymore when the player is jumping. Now save your changes and try how the sounds are working. Can you spot one issue with the run sound? It keeps playing after the player dies. Go to the collide function, and in the second if statement, add the stop function for the run sound. Now it should be fixed. Next, let's add some scoring for our game. Click to the main scene and insert there a new property called score, and give it a number value of 0. In the end of the init function, create a new instance of the text class. Give it a parameter string score colon zero, and store it as a variable inside the class. Then add it to the stage. Next, create a new function inside the scene called add score. In that function, increase the score property by one, and update the score text with the new value by using set text function. Lastly, Click to the obstacle class and go to the remove function. Add new if statement that checks if the player has not died yet. Then call the scene's add score function that we just created. Now on your save project, you should see your new score text in the top left corner that is updating every time an obstacle has passed to the left side of the game view. We still need to fix one issue with our game. If you reload the game by pressing the reload button on the game view, you can see that the game starts straight from the main scene. We need to change that. So it starts from our title screen that we created. Click on the modules button. Then open the game.config module. In the system object, add new property called start scene and set its value to string title. Save and reload. Now the game should start from the correct scene. Lastly, let's polish the game a bit and add some particles. Click on the modules button to switch back to the class's view and click on the player class. In the end of the init function, create a new instance of particles class and store it inside the player class using this keyword. Use texture particle.png as a parameter. Then set its position x to 200 and y to 950. Also, Set speed to 500, so the particles will move the same speed as our background and obstacles. Next, set property angle to value math.pi. This will make the particles move straight and left. Value 0 would mean straight and right. These values are in radians, and math.pi is the same as 180 degrees. To add some variance to each particle's angle, we can use the property angle var and set its value to 0.2. Then set the property active to false, and add the class to the player layer. Move to the collide function. In the end of the first if statement, 
set the particle's active value to true. In the end of the second if statement, set it to false. This way, the particle's emitter will only be active once the player is on the ground. Lastly, set the active property to false also in the end of the jump function. Now save, switch to the main scene, and you should see some particles flying from the player's legs when it's running on the ground. Great job! You have now learned some new techniques with Panda 2. That's it! Thanks for watching, and happy coding!